Her name was Colleen, and I actually fell in love with her because of how mysterious she was. When I first met her, she was doing this thing on MySpace at the time. This was back in like 2007, and she was trying to make a difference in the school, like because there was a lot of bullying going on. And she also like was messaging me through the MySpace page, and then she like came up to me in real life, and no other person was doing that. And I don't know, I just kind of fell in love with her. And honestly, I still think about her every single day, like day. Like, there's not a day that goes by without me thinking about how she's doing. But, you know, life goes on. I mean, that's kind of irrelevant now because I live on my own with my two kids and my uh, girlfriend that I've been with for six years. So, honestly, I went to college and got crazy. So, I don't even remember half the shit after college. Let's just say that. I got real fucked up. I just ended up in a psych ward and ICU for two days. Let's just say that. I almost died. And I popped nine Vicodin. 26 Zoloft, which is a antidepressant, and 7 Concerta, which 7 Con Concerta is an ADHD medication. So that's how I ended up in the hospital because I tremendously overdosed and just about died because I took three different medications at an exorbitant amount. Like, you know, motherfucker wasn't feeling a goddamn thing. So yeah, needless to say, I could probably punch my head through a wall and not even feel it. It would lower your blood pressure so much that your brain couldn't process things at a normal rate of speed. So everything moved like you're in a mirror verse. Like everything was so slow, even though it wasn't. But it's because your brain isn't getting enough blood to your, you know, your heart's not able to give it to your head enough. So everything just moves so slow and shit. You could run down a hallway and it would feel like you're actually like walking and instead yeah, and then you look at your hands and like if you would wave them around your brain still couldn't process that speed so like it would like create like copies of it you know like uh like a trail yeah you know, like those action action movies and stuff when they pull out the gun in like slow motion and like you can see the ghost effect of them pulling it out yeah like everything was ghosted everything had like a like a ghost effect to it my first thought wasn't about like anything but myself like I didn't even know what I was doing, to be honest. Like, I just did it. Didn't even think about the outcome. I lost my ability to walk for like two days in the psychiatric center. Like, I had to be in a wheelchair. <laughs> my muscles and my body were so constrained because of the, the counter reaction to the, the shit that I took. They were so strained and they were just so weak that like, I couldn't do anything. Like, I couldn't move my arms up and down. I couldn't move my legs legs up and down couldn't do anything it was bad the one thing that i can say is when i was in that icu i was fully aware of what just happened what i did and i knew i could i could die like and it scared the fuck out of me now this is before i had kids and stuff so it's not like i had too much to lose at the time but that's not even the point the point was is i was scared shitless when when you know you could potentially be dying is like the worst feeling in the world like probably the worst because it was too late for the doctors to do anything see normally if you overdose on drugs um that you take pill form wise they can usually pump your stomach but that shit was already through my system it was already through my blood it was too late the only thing that they could do was give me an iv full of saline and then yeah, but luckily, apparently the you know the the saline uh, was enough to dilute all those drugs that I took, and I ended up pulling through though. Scared shitless though. I mean, and like I said, the the main the main thing that really changed a lot was being the fact that I was about to die. Like that really circulated through my head, man. Like because at that point I was like, I don't want to die. Like this is some scary shit, man. This world may suck. There's a lot of bad people in this world, but honestly, living, just living in general is the best damn thing and the best gift that we could have as human beings. That's a, a loaded question, buddy. I can give you a quick and short answer, though. Her name was Melinda, and the second answer is because she was the first person to ever actually show interest in me. We dated for three years, and then she slept with my best friend. Oh. It's been five years, and I still think about her every day. And then I moved like 3,000 kilometers away. So like when it happened, like, I don't know, I just cut everybody like out of my life for the longest time. And then after like, I don't know, let's say like three years, like I tried to like get over it and like have him back in my life. And then I, he was just still like the same terrible person he was. And so after, yeah, uh, for about three months, like I just cut him right back out again. He just, it wasn't worth it. I figured I could find better new friends. And here I am on VR chat. Her name was Jolene, I remember. 
I don't know, man. It just kind of hit me like lightning, you know? It was just like, hey, man. She was someone who was abnormally nice to me. Really just came up to me out of nowhere and just sparked up a conversation with me. Where, at the time, a lot of other people just didn't do that so much. And she was just really chill and nice. I don't know if I would have ended up staying with her... Because uh, it was weird because we were younger at the time a bit. She ended up m- moving away is what happened with that one. We all go through trials, but it's how we come out of them that defines who we are. You either learn going through stuff, or you get beat down by it. I choose to learn from it. My bodan hangdong iji. It would be honorable to subscribe because actions speak louder than words. Her name was Johanna. She was from Finland. Well, she was pretty much the first real girlfriend I had, and uh, she was different than anybody I'd ever dated. She was honest, uh, down to earth, so I was just smitten for the most part. (laughs) But yeah, it was just so many things. Plus, you know, you're a teenager, so there's a lot of hormones and all that going on there. (laughs) Actually, my first real love was in middle school on another social game, kind of like this. Except it was 2D, so I, th- I think I have a habit of gravitating towards these kinds of social platforms. It didn't last too long, but I still appreciate the time. Every experience you get in romance sort of like changes you. You grow from the experience. If you love someone, let them know, you know, because you're not going to get another chance. And you just got to go for it. Like, even if you're scared, because I was scared when I first started talking to her but you know when you you care for someone that much you just gotta go for it like even if you feel like you you're not enough you are enough if she's willing to talk to you or he you know depending on who you are if you're a boy or a girl or if you're gay you know uh, no judgments here just go for it like if they're willing to talk to you that means they have some kind of connection with you and even if they don't like you that way at least they know that you care if we're talking like my uh, honest to god's uh true first love every relationship i've been in i could never truthfully say i was happy i ended up either getting used in one way or another emotionally put down however the way you want to look at that um i ended up falling for one person in particular due to they they were different from everyone else i'm gonna go by her pet name her name is schnookums and because she makes me feel like a better me she makes me feel like i can do whatever as far as evolving myself with her and doing better in life with her and knowing that she's there with me and she's just kind of my rock man you know well i think everyone knows what love is or love something or someone i think i mean being in love with a person that isn't like a family or something like that i hope everyone's experienced it but i have yeah the name was kendra and uh you know it's the simple little things that connect with you as a person people think too deeply about like what they want from someone whether it's their looks whether it's how they act or something like that but simply seeing them should make your day better and if you find someone that every time you see them it makes your day better it's probably the person that's best for you rather than someone who has the best body or does just the things you like let me clarify some things i'm brazilian so the name is gonna be a little weird for you her name was anna she didn't like me at first but I was quite persistent, yes, perfect. And <laughs> on the day she was dating someone else and, well, I don't know, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I ended up dating her, but we had to break up because, well, life. You know, you got me in a hard time because I won't say I just ended a relationship. I ended a relationship six months ago, but she was very special to me because I moved to Portugal and uh, the pandemic stuff and all that, I didn't have an opportunity to make friends you know then i met my ex and she was the only person i i had to make me company it was very tough for me to break up with her but it needed to be done and i miss her until today but life goes on i don't know i've i've been i've avoided dating i think especially in high school i just think more times than not it's not gonna work out and i don't really i don't know i just don't put myself out there like that I just think I want it to come to me, you know, I want to, of course, at some point I'll probably make a move on, you know, whoever, whoever I think is, is the one, but I think I'm just laying low for now. Her name was Clasher. Amazing. Quickly, I realized, because I was still like, hella depressed, and I was like, I realized I can't have a relationship at the state I'm in. 
I felt like I wasn't perfect enough. I feel like I wasn't good enough for her. She reassured everything like I was enough and that, but I still felt I'm not. She's just saying that because, I don't know, reasons. I feel like I just found the Dutch version of myself. Because it was a person who's more similar to me and also had idealized traits that I don't have. Yeah, they were, they were just a better version of me, more, more intelligent, beautiful. Beautiful. They're just a better version of me with the same beliefs that I do. The world is a crazy bubble of chaos and anything bad you could think of, you could describe it as. But it is the thing that is also the most beautiful and open and adventurous place that we are allowed to go to. And I think that it's it's kind of crazy that the place that we call our home is the craziest and also the most calm and beautiful place you can be at the same time. And it's to take advantage of everything you can and to do best with what you got. I'm going to leave you with this. If you truly love something, you will let it go. And if it comes back to you in some way or another, than it is meant to be. So it, it, just because it doesn't work out then doesn't mean it won't work out later. Just be kind to people. We only got one life to live, man. And it's 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 not worth it to go through everything like that and just be an asshole. <laughs> and the wise words of Bill and Ted, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. <laughs> Thank you, man. You're... Damn, this was cool, bro. I, I, I think, like, I, I, got in, I got in VR chat too. Like, I, I have zero expectations, and, and I found you. So my day is, it's completed. And well, I got surprised. Thank you, man. Kindness is contagious. When you are kind, you inspire others. Be the spark. Spreading kindness merchandise available now.